angst made me feel very important uh, quite uh, excited to be here you know i think we have an average uh, you know experience level of about sorry all right thanks about 20 years so you know and a combined experience of say hundreds of years sitting right in front of me uh gustaki maaf agar kuch galat bolu do pitch in and uh, you know uh, ask your questions uh, so i'll give you a brief about fleet x we are about a 6 year old company and we've been uh, you know doing the, the automation and logist uh, you know uh, digitization in the logistics operations uh, for same amount of time and now it's not going to be a sales pitch it's just that you know i just wanted to share some of my thoughts on it and uh, so here we start now which is the next button the one on the left ah okay thanks now uh, you know uh, all of you are quite aware that uh, it's pretty important that uh, you know some kind of planning activity or planning thought goes into managing your uh, dispatch operations and uh, i'm pretty sure there have been times where in the past you know one uh, has gone in and uh, you know adopted some kind of planning tool or the other be it uh, you know snop or an ibp but generally what i have personally observed is that you know on the dispatch planning side of things or transportation planning there is always a lacuna you know we kind of tend to uh, rely on the uh, you know human resources more rather than the tools that are available in the market but over the past few years i think specifically right from when of the covid onset uh, we observed you know as uh, you know uh, proponents of uh, digitization in the logistics that there was quite an uptick uh, in terms of uh, queries for uh, managing things remotely because on site presence was kind of pretty difficult and uh, you know uh, collaborating on uh, via phone calls email etc was pretty difficult uh, no centralized platform available as a single source of truth now uh, there are a lot of pain points that you know i'm sure the industry goes through and specifically the logistics people you know i've been on the other side of uh, the you know uh, the table wherein i've been a vendor as a transport vendor i'm observed pretty closely that uh, you know what challenges lie for all the partners involved be it on the you know uh, manufacturing side or as a transport partner or probably for the consignees as well i think uh, you know some of the points that i would like to clearly mention here would be on the resource utilization when i talk about resources uh, let's talk about the in house resources that are available for managing any kind of dispatch operations now these are specifically the planners the uh, people who are responsible for loading the people who are responsible for the documentation etc now all of this takes quite a bit of time there are a lot of compliance especially in a country like ours which is pretty heavy on the uh, you know reg regulatory side of things and the documentation side of things and there is hardly any you know scope for error um, you know i would like to jog your memories a few years back when the gst started the implementation started there were a lot of cases where uh, you know unintentional errors crept in and the government was pretty quick on uh, you know penalizing us so i think uh, it's pretty important that uh, you know we uh, focus a lot on the compliance part as well now timely execution is a challenge now you receive a sales order or a, you know requirement for dispatch of goods somebody tells you the probably the sales person is breathing down your neck and says usko do din mein ya teen din mein deliver karna hai but how do you manage it because you already have a backlog of orders now uh, uh, doing it manually can be a challenge how about a tool that assists you in uh, doing so and specifically in cases where uh, you know the uh, last mile part is there uh you know there is hardly any time to you know especially especially in the fncg side of things you know to uh, make any changes on the fly so these are some of the points that uh, you know i just wanted to bring forth of course you guys know better than i do you know route to market is cheapest and the shortest route pretty important we do it you know on the basis of our uh, mm -hmm. lot of experience or certain interactions that we have within the industry but uh, getting real time updates on the traffic situations or probably certain routes that have closed you know can be a little difficult without any kind of uh, you know real time information and i think these are one of the challenges that we face and of course last but not the least you know the freight spends that are there because we have already seen, you know i've personally observed that uh, you know logistics is uh, considered as a cost center and not a profit center after all so 
you know, the first question that anybody asks, the management asks of the logistics people is how much are you spending, can you control it, can you reduce it? I think that's a zero-sum game, one cannot go down to zero absolutely to in terms of, you know, eliminating the cost, but yes, controlling management are uh, key important points that obviously, uh, uh, you know, challenging for any, uh, uh, you know, head of department. I think, uh, uh, you know, the next part obviously comes that how can software assist you and your teams in terms of uh, doing better planning, faster execution, etc. So there are obviously the two parts that uh, in terms of planning and execution. Now, uh, we know that the uh, demand for goods delivery is certainly going to outstrip the physical infrastructure that is currently there and even the one that is in the pipeline. How, Certainly our country is making great strides in terms of uh, coming up with dedicated freight corridors and expressways for transportation of goods, but still, at the same time, I think there's always going to be a physical limit in terms of uh, making a profound change in the infrastructure possible. Uh, competitiveness is, you know, uh, a point where, uh, you know, uh, is a place where uh, any company can make a, you know, positive impact to the customer's side. Now, uh, one can do only as much in terms of input costs, and there's a lot of pricing pressure. Uh, we are pretty aware that price points are pretty sacrosanct. Now, if I may take example of a sachet of shampoo, I think pretty unique to South Asia, one rupee, two rupee, uh, uh, you know, sachets. They're pretty popular with uh, the, uh, you know, the lower part of the pyramid, and uh, we know that any change to it would result in, uh, you know, people moving from one brand to the other or non-availability of particular SKUs. Now. <clears throat> so it's important that, uh, you know, you have things on the shelf. I think the, uh, uh, in terms of brand, uh, you know, uh, loyalty, people are pretty fickle. Uh, if it's not on the shelf, one would move on, be it in terms of a bo water bottle. You know, nobody cares that when you have, one is thirsty, nobody cares what brand is there, it just should be available. And it's important that the uh, fill rates are adhered to and so on and so forth. So I think, uh, and especially in a country like us, we are pretty, uh, you know, uh, reliant on the road infrastructure and, uh, you know, we utilize less of the uh, other modes of transportation available. Thus, it becomes pretty imperative that we, uh, you know, manage our uh, planning part pretty effectively. Now, I think uh, the entire orchestration right from ready to ship to deliveries can be done on a particular platform. There will be cases where I think a lot of people in the audience would be utilizing some tool or the other and I uh, would definitely love to hear about their experience here and how best we can address those concerns. Obviously, any software tool would enable you to uh, plan in advance, uh, would help you in excellent execution, uh, be a single source of truth, uh, collaborative in nature. Uh, you know, nowadays a lot of communication with your external partners happens over email or any kind of, uh, you know, WhatsApp communication. Record keeping is a tough ask, uh, you know, getting real-time responses or probably having an audit trail is a difficult thing. So I think any tool that enables us to do all of the above combined would certainly help in, uh, you know, the entire industry. Now, we've talked about a lot of visibility, you know, over the past six seven years or probably ten years or so. When you talk of visibility, most of the time the discussion veers towards only the uh, uh, truck side of things or the you know, vehicle side of things. We also must you know, cater to the SKU level or the product level visibility. I think I'm sure your consignees and your, your customers and you yourself would love to know that if in a particular trip from point A to point B, what goods are being carried. Now, uh, it's most of the time pretty difficult for anybody and specifically on the receiving side of things to find out that which truck has which invoice. So I think any software platform, you know, would be able to help you with all of that, giving 360 degree uh, view, uh, you know, and we also know that any kind of tool that is implemented would help not just the person who's paying for it, who's the implementation, uh, you know, who's implemented for them, so even their channel partners in, you know, better downstream planning. You don't, don't obviously want your uh, vehicles to be detained at the destination just for the sake of, uh, you know, just because visibility is not there when the vehicle is going to reach and so and so forth. And uh, I think uh, that is one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, key areas that we are looking to solve. Now, if you recollect, I just mentioned about uh, the, uh, you know, the logistics department being a, uh, you know, cost center and not a 
profit center. I know it's pretty difficult to make it into a profit center. Generally, it's the, uh, you know, the sales side of things that are generally taken as a revenue generating department. But how about, you know, controlling the actual damages? First is acknowledging it, recording it, understanding it, and then obviously controlling and management of it. Now, there are different types of losses one can cater to. One is the, obviously the actual loss, then is an opportunity, you know, cost of site uh, loss or a cost side of things. Say, suppose you're not able to, uh, you know, probably cater to an urgent requirement because you don't have a tool or a wherewithal to manage the delivery. I and mean, that's an opportunity losses. Ultimately, one can consider it as a loss of revenue or a loss of sale. Then obviously, the other part is, uh, you know, uh, in terms of cost overruns. Um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are, uh, you know, uh, grappling with the issues of uh, charges that are over and above what you pay your transport partners, in, be it in terms of, uh, you know, detention charges or uh, uh, probably damages, shortages, and, uh, you know, other charges. I think one can obviously use a tool that becomes, uh, you know, that is omnipresent for everyone to utilize, manage, and bring, bring about a positive change in terms of making people accountable for the actions that they take. Next, I think, as a conclusion, uh, you know, I would like to say that any kind of tool, you know, enables us to reduce paperwork, obviously doing the compliance side of things, increases efficiency and competitiveness. Why competitiveness? Because there's only so much on the, uh, you know, cost side and the price side of things that you can do. It's only the efficiency that would enable any manufacturing entity to, you know, uh, be more alluring to its customers and uh, ensuring that on time and in full fulfillment or, you know, uh, keeping their cost to serve low would certainly help. Next, obviously, uh, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, invite for any questions if uh, there's something that we can help with. We at Fleetex have recently launched our transportation management system, which obviously includes the uh, dispatch planning side and the execution side of things. We are currently working with a few pharmaceutical companies to, you know, manage their entire operations. Would definitely love to get together with, uh, you know, uh, folks in the audience to see if we can do something for them. Uh, thank you. Well, thanks for the polite applause. My question is not uh, direct as of Litex, uh, but Please. for this uh, gr group of handling the automation of transportation and logistics. I can understand Fleetex, you must having your own fleets or connected fleets which you handle and give the automation. Is there going to be any future in India that you have a common operator like Ola handling 10 different transport modules and providing a solution to customers or to uh, the kind of a porter module which is now in operation. So for a big transportation, for the mega transportation, is there some, some kind of mechanism, thought process, or is there anything which exists right now? I will thank you for our, uh, you know, asking this question. Uh, you know, obviously you're referring to the marketplace model for, uh, you know, sourcing of transportation. There's obviously a scope, uh, you know, and I agree with you, but in my considered opinion, we are still, you know, um, pretty, uh, you know, wet behind the ear in terms of bringing about a true marketplace platform. You know, there are a multitude of challenges uh, that one needs to address before we bring about a model that is commercially viable. Now, one of them being the trust issue. Now, uh, you know, over the past, so you pick, pick up any manufacturing entity, they have partners that they are working for over the past 20 years, 30 years, you know, going back donkey's years. Uh, how about, you know, somebody provides you a portal and say, okay, here are a set of partners who are ready to serve you at cost lower than what you currently have, and how do you trust them? Uh, one is the verification validation part of it, and, uh, you know, the trust factor that I think is going to take time to build. And uh, you mentioned Ola and Uber, you know, I think, they are, uh, I would say just, technology is just an enabler for them. You know, uh, they are providing the services, somewhat they are taking responsibility uh, for uh, the kind of services that they offer you in a true marketplace. I think it's difficult for uh, the marketplace to itself to become totally enmeshed with the entire operations because I think a transportation marketplace is nothing but just a tech enabled, you know, platform that would uh, provide both the uh, uh, the service seekers and the service providers to interact and uh, till the time, you know, we don't have an environment that 
encompasses the entire real-time picture all across the country, you know, to match the demand and the supply, it will be pretty difficult to, you know, come to something what you probably, you know, uh, uh, indicated and would like, you know, and, uh, but obviously there's scope. Um, you know, the, there was a documentary that I saw where, you know, a similar model was running in North America, but then, uh, you know, I think we are generally pretty behind in terms of adoption and technology, even though on the consumer side of things we would skip a generation, uh, but uh, I think, sorry to say, but on the business side of things we tend to uh, pretty much uh, vacillate and uh, think that, you know, you know they, we are kind of not ready with adoption of technology, but I really appreciate that you do ask this question and, you know, these are my thoughts. Yes, there is scope, but I think, personally speaking, about another 10, 15 years to go to have a marketplace model. All right. Thank you. For felicitation, I would like to call upon stage Mr. Vijay Shetty to please be on the stage and felicitate Mr. Ankur Dudi.